today I was going to go through some intermediate cost and pricing things. It won't take very long for me to get through what I just kind of wanted to talk to you about today. And then it was mostly a Q&A day anyway. So with intermediate and area-based pricing, why it's not called advanced cost, why they're not advanced classes, is mainly because I'm not getting into CFL, which is our formula language. We'll talk about it a little bit, but I'm not going to try to. So if we're in control and looking at an order, there's a few things I want to discuss that you can set to control minimums, things of that nature. First one in the system setup, on the same tab as your next numbers and orders, you'll see up at the top, I want all orders for this store to be validated with a minimum amount. All this basically says is that by default, I want every order to have a minimum of $50, whatever I put in there. It will not change the price to $50, nor will it prevent them from putting in an order under $50. It just gives a warning of the nature. What we found is most shops do not want this universal because they may put in a service ticket at $0 until they get back from service, or there may be a repeat order that has been put in as a $0 because it's a redo or things of that nature. So generally, we're not blocking it completely. The next part to control minimums and things of that nature is in the product itself. I look at the view product on the pricing tab. This is where it gets its final price from, is the formula that's either looking at area-based pricing or part-based pricing or cost-based. Either one, and it's just based off of that trigger. On this screen, however, there is an advanced button at the very bottom. This will allow you to set certain aspects of the particular product. The first one is if you have a base price minimum. What a base price minimum means is the base of this wide format print product has to equal a certain amount. A subtotal would mean this base product plus any add-ons or modifiers have to equal this amount. Per piece minimum is based off your quantity since our unit is quantity in this product. The so per piece minimum would be I need a, you know, I don't charge less than $5 piece. And that would become your minimum. Currently, this product is rounding to the next penny. If I wanted this to always round to the next dollar, I could do that as well. And that would be next you know, 50 cents, dollar, 10 cents, etc. Include modifier cost in product's cost before applying modifiers. What this is basically doing is with your modifiers, which in my product, here by what those are, your add-ons. These are modifiers. What that checkbox is asking is, do I want them each to have their individual price, like it's doing now, and therefore in my product, will pull in as modifiers as a separate unit. If these are pulling specific parts, like finishing hours, etc., you can say, no, I don't want it to do a price as a modifier. I just want it to include it in the base price of this product. Therefore, what that trigger will do is exactly that. Generally, if that is checked, it will flag you to that sort. So if I'm in this effort and I open it up, it might need a refresh. It will generally be a yellow bar at the top that will show up that it's adding them to something else. Now, the other things you can do within a product, as far as pricing is concerned, is you'll see a built-in discount and a default discount field. Currently, they are pretty much blank on almost all of the product. This is to be, add a discount to this particular price structure. These discounts could pull a table, so I could look back where we talked about tables and pull a table into my discount. Or it could be a formula altogether. It could be a formula that said, if this customer is tracked as wholesale, I give 10%. So therefore, it would be 10% of this formula. The default discount will show as a discount on estimates and invoices. 
meaning that 10% would physically show on their estimate as a 10% discount. This discount is just built into the base price. This is too different. The product warning is anything that you want to pop open in the middle of the screen anytime you do something for this product. These can be used to define, to prevent mistakes. Meaning, if I have a mistake, if the person choosing the wrong laminate or the wrong with the wrong vinyl, you can go in and say, if this laminate is selected and this uh, material is selected, throw up a warning. You know that you can't do it, etc. Now, a warning will allow you to pass through it, meaning you can hit OK and keep going. Just a warning. An error. The same formula in an error would just prevent it altogether. It would go in and say, no, you cannot save this line item until that is corrected. And those can help in pricing as well. Next thing I want to talk about is at the top of this particular product, you'll notice that in the pricing, we are on the default pricing method. Default. Every default pricing method. You can create new pricing methods. Let's say for my wholesale clients, I do the same thing. I'm using area-based pricing, or maybe I'm using part-based pricing, but I want it, instead of saying I want to use standard part-based pricing, I want to take all the costs and mark them up by 1.2 you know, for my wholesale, rather than the standard pricing. Well, you can create a whole new pricing plan. Now, a pricing plan needs to be set up, so I'll come down here to pricing plan. I'll hit new and call both of them. That's an example. All right, now that I have an additional pricing plan, back in my product setup, I can add a pricing plan, call it wholesale. Now in this scenario though, instead of part-based price, and this is what I was talking on CFL, I'm not going to try to explain CFL, more talking what you can do. I could say material cost times one times three. So in my wholesale pricing structure, all I'm doing is marking up the material. Not looking at equipment, not looking at labor. I'm just taking the cost and multiplying it by three of whatever materials I use. And that's what my wholesale pricing plan is. Again, just an example. So I'm going to save that. Now I have basically a default and a wholesale pricing planner that, that are completely separate for the same product. When you're setting up an employee, I mean a company, you'll see a pricing plan. If I make this company a wholesale pricing plan, then it will look at this product and use the pricing from wholesale rather than default. If you try to use a pricing plan that does not exist, meaning I have a third one that's, uh, you know, something else, out-of-state resale or whatever, the pricing plan may be, if it can't find it, it's always going to jump back to the default. So if I set a company up with wholesale, they try to do a product that doesn't have wholesale, it's just going to jump back to the default. This is a way of setting up completely different ways of pricing based off of a, a, a company. This gets to be a little more confusing than some of the other ways, but it can bring to a lot of accuracy as well in when required. The primary ways people set these up, however, is on the company record. There's a pricing level and a promotion. You can also default these on the company orders, etc. So if this was a wholesale, I could do a promotion, which is a 10% discount, and always give them a 10% discount. You could also do a pricing level and pricing levels can be up or down, 
So I could do a 90% pricing level, which would decrease their prices by 10%. Now the difference is if I do a, a decrease on pricing level, it is not going to show as a discount. It's just lowering the price 10%. And that's often what people would want on a wholesale client. They don't necessarily want to tell their wholesale clients what they would retail it for. So therefore, it breaks those apart. Where a promotion will physically show it as a discount on the order. This is a simple way of setting up different pricing classes and different pricing levels for different types of clients. To let you know, they can both be set up. I could have a 110% pricing level and a 10% promotion, therefore, really being back to where you pretty much started but showing a 10% discount on the order. Another way of controlling prices. Let's talk about a third mechanism that can be used is when we're talking about adding prices for a specific client. Meaning I have a client that on a particular, whenever he orders banners, I have a price for him of X amount per square feet. Something of that nature. Well, that can be done based off of user-defined fields. Every company record has a set of user-defined fields. These user-defined fields you can remove and add as necessary. You can also categorize them, such as contract pricing. If we wanted to create a user-defined field, I could have a user-defined field for banner price. Then in my product, there would be a couple different ways of doing that as well. I could tell it in my list of, for banners to pull that price and then in my price pull the list of my banners. That way it knows when I select a banner material type, it pulls it. I could say that this is a separate product I'm building just for this type of whatever component it is I'm cloning out and therefore I just want to always use those prices for contract customers so I could just do it in here. You could do it on each individual material basis as well. It becomes more complex and more difficult to maintain if you have to think of a price for each client on 12 different banner materials. Compared to this is the standard, what I use, etc. And those are using user-defined fields based on the company record and then pulling them back into a particular product. This takes a little setup. It takes a little bit of formula work create the new ones and tie them back in and I recommend you get with your point person to, if you feel a need for any of these that we're discussing just to go in in more detail. Now those are predominant way in affecting what we've already done in cost-based and area-based pricing for a particular product. And my assumption today is we've gone through those, you have a general understanding of the costing and pricing. Now in my formulas as you've seen in this one, I can either pull pace, prices, I can pull costs and do different things with them. And this is material costs, it could be all costs, labor costs, etc., and readjust my multipliers that way to reassign based off of a different need for different clients. Next thing with pricing is just tweaking the formulas themselves. Some of that is, again, takes the uh, user. I had a client earlier today ask me about adding in extra material for the lamination. Well, that's really more on pulling that material and therefore it would be associated with the variable that's pulling that material. In this case, if I look at lamination, my front laminate, this is the field that's actually physically pulling when I add a front material. It has a utilization formula which is roll stock roll length. If I wanted it to be roll stock roll length plus three feet, then that's really the only change I need to make and then it will always add three feet of laminate whenever I'm pulling. So above beyond what we can do in the pricing, if we need to adjust small tweaks for a specific need, that can be done as well in the structure of the product. Other thing with pricing is adding small components that aren't already in the system. Every time I do a banner material, it takes me X amount of time to go pull it or something else that we hadn't thought about. So, and therefore, I can go to my parts and add specific parts just for that function. So, in this scenario, every time I add banners, material, or something of that nature, I want to add some finishing labor. I'm going to add 
my particular labor. And there are a lot of different labors in here. It could be you just want to add design time. It could be you add, we'll just say that, the time it takes me a little extra. And then my formula could very easily be something of the nature if roll stock material type equals banner. All this is looking for is it true or false. And then it's going to pull this part I just added. If roll stock goes banner, pull it. Then it wants to know how much is going to be pulled. And I could just say 15 minutes in hours. Now again, everything by the time, based on how the labor parts are put in, they're all in hours, so therefore they need to be put in that way. You can do 15 minutes in hours, or I could say 0.25 hours. Now on this particular product, anytime I pull a banner material, it's going to add 15 minutes of labor. Well, this has happened based off of cost. So right now it's only affecting costing and cost-based pricing. If I wanted to go into my pricing, you will see that I have area-based pricing, mounting-based pricing. These are the different variables that link in my product. If we're looking at an area-based pricing structure, these are these variables. Base price, mounting price, cutting price, etc. So if I just automatically wanted to add extra dollar amounts into one of these for something in nature, it's the same type of formula work. I'm just going into the product, going to that particular variable for area-based pricing, price, and I can go in with an if statement using the same statement. If material type equals banner, then add $10. We have the structure built based off of what's most standard for most people as far as the products, the parts, and what associates an area-based, cost-based pricing with them. Every shop has, sometimes has little tweaks, little things they didn't think about, and that's kind of what I'm discussing today. It's ways of manipulating the system to do what you want it to do. All right, any questions on that? Yeah, so if you have elk, you have elk material cost times three and if, and then what if it was for how do you insert for the machine and the labor and stuff like that? What would be the proper, or the proper script, I should say? That's no, this, this is ignored. What I just did under wholesale yeah. was ignored them all. I want to do a wholesale pricing for specific clients, which I would, and I'd say the material cost right. times whatever, so you would use the plus sign and then you would add your other operators? Correct. Then I could do equipment cost times... One times two, and so forth. Okay, if I wanted it to break it up that way, do I have to close it out with two parentheses, three parentheses, four parentheses, depending on how many add-ons? No, not all the way across. You do each component because I don't want it. I want to make sure my multiplication to... doesn't happen before that. But that's fine. Okay. And think about it. In this scenario, you know, I'm doing it, that's cost-based pricing, but cost-based pricing now to me, to the system under wholesale means material. And you could do uh, all costs, you know, if you wanted to, but this just equipment. My next one would be labor cost, other cost, etc. Now, in okay. the builder, up at the top, yeah, you can find all of these as well. Okay. You'll see where it is. Oh, there we have material costs. Now, me and son's equipment cost means all the children as well as the parents. Okay. To where labor costs, but that's main different freight costs, you know, whichever ones you would need. Okay. Again, I'll gladly help you with any specifics, but this is for your kind of okay. pulling whatever kind of components you want. Now, be care a little careful here if you're going to use different pricing plans like this. It does get a full set 
of different variables as well. Meaning I can go set a default or a change a specific variable under wholesale and it won't change it under default. Right, right. so it's just going to copy the default you add them, Right, you'll need to change them on each one if you make okay. a change. So it's easier to set up the default first. But, you know, but there are scenarios where under wholesale you may want one of these to calculate differently as well. So not necessarily in wide format prints, but you could have it look at it completely different. On wholesale, I default to something, you know, a banner, something. You know, default my grommets differently or, you know, no telling what. Okay. You know, maybe under wholesale you always default to specific material because this is the material I print for wholesale. But on right. default, you don't. Okay. And that's a completely different structure. Well, that's pretty much all I have today.